uh, what we have been covering so far are uh, mainly industrial manipulators or industrial robots which are stationary. We uh, discussed um, the various subsystems which uh, they are composed of, uh, hard, that is the hardware which goes into that and also uh, which are the major calculations to be done by the controller and uh, at the higher level uh, and how does one control it at the lowest level that is automatic control with feedback. You also saw one uh, sensor which is at a higher level which is used uh, at a higher level that is the camera. Right? So, what we will be discussing uh, today and in the next class is a design of a walking robot which we have done in robotics lab. So, we can give you the details of that design. Now, walking robots uh, come under the category called mobile robots. Mobile robots are obviously different from stationary robots. Stationary robots have their base fixed uh, to the global reference frame, whereas mobile robots can move, its base is not fixed, it can move around. There are various applications for which mobile robots are used, I will list a few of them. I will give you a set of typical applications say material transport, in factories, hmm. what are typically used for material transport in factories? You have overhead traveling cranes, right, cranes are used typically if you want to carry something slightly heavy. Uh, one possibility is to use uh, mobile robots for parts which are not very heavy. So, a typical example is the automated guided vehicle, AGV stands for automated guided vehicle. What you have is a mobile robot which can follow tracks on the ground. So, it is not entirely free to move anywhere in the on the factory floor. There are tracks laid on the ground either using reflective paint or using wires. So, there would be sensors on the robot which can sense uh, the play, the light reflected off this paint or the electromagnetic radiations which are there in wires which carry currents. And with those sensors it is able to follow on the tracks. Right? AGV visa typically wheeled robots which can do this. Another uh, set of application is for inspection uh, and some amount of servicing like maintenance. Tanks, pipes, sewers. larger installations like nuclear power plants, things like that. What are used uh, in this context are things like pipe crawlers, walking robots, uh, the robot that I am going to describe falls under this category. Use for simple man suppose a pipe gets clogged then uh, you need to unclog that remove the clog. So, what is what could be done is send a robot in locate that uh, obstacle and remove that. Another application is uh, surveillance and security.
typically in counter insurgency operations bomb disposal and things like that and for surveillance uh, what are typically used are tracked vehicles could be wheeled also but more often tracked than wheeled people have built what are called drones which can fly and hover and take pictures and this is some of the there are underwater robots which can also be used for this kind of activity so a robot need not be mobile only on the ground it could be in the air or under water or on the surface of water uh, there have been robots used for mobile robots used for planetary observation planetary exploration not very detailed exploration but within a small region there was one sent to moon called the lunar code and that uh, moved quite a distance on the surface of the earth this was sent by russians and recently some years back uh, the americans sent a mission to mars where they had this rover which could move around on the surface of mars collecting samples it has to perform under very harsh circumstances environments temperature ranging uh, the inside temperature of the robot ranging within a very wide range of temperatures and uh, another constraint for such uh, expeditions is that the robot has to be extremely compact and light uh, each kilogram added to a mission to mars means several millions of dollars not just kilogram even grams could run <laughs> into the such thing so minimizing weight is very critical making it robust after all this travel under big shock forces and all that and landing it has to perform reliability is a big issue so these are very very interesting and capable machines which have been built what are usually seen are wheeled rovers recently there have been robots made for entertainment can you have you seen them ibo so quadrupeds means four legged robots bipeds two legged asimo and ah, from sony is it called what is it called u r i u yeah yeah so it was earlier called sdr 3x and the later models probably are now given more human like names so bipeds so for entertainment right now for entertainment and things like that but remember these bipeds are the original vision of robots something very human like a machine which can take decisions by themselves and also move around like human beings and do the work of human beings and that was the original vision of robots we have actually early 1920s was a play which was with the name robot first uh, first appeared where uh, these human like creatures would work in factories so it is now 75 years and we now have something similar to that not similar to that that has to be intelligent we can call the robots we have now very intelligent so there are several uh, applications for which mobile robots are being used now and mobile robots have actually changed the concept of robotics itself which for a long time were stationary robots used in industry right so the robots have moved out into the field or onto the factory floor and uh, a much larger variety of robots are now being seen so i'll describe the design of a robot for a particular application which we 
the robot was developed in robotics lab at the IIT Bombay. Now all of you have seen Nadraj, right? So yeah, I I just showed a few. I just showed a few methods by which things move. This is it's not confined to just that. There are many different ways, different means by which mobility can be given on the surface of earth to a robot. Wheeled is a very traditional way we were doing things. Tracked in army tanks, you have tracks. We have flying machines with rigid wings with and with rotating wings, right? The helicopters. But now people have started using making flapping wings flying machines. Under the water or on the surface of the water we use propellers to drive the to propel the robot or the boat or whatever and that is what is usually used even now. Crawlers and walking machines use appendages like legs and arms. Right? There are robots which have been made which actually cra crawl like the snake. So there are no appendages. Okay. The robots which have been made, which uh, which move the tail in order to propel itself in water, like the fish or like an eel. The means of mobility which have now been conceived and built are uh, usually it actually takes uh, inspiration from nature. But we have gone beyond that also wheel robot for example, wheels you do not say in nature, so one of the biggest invention of mechanical engineers right wheels and the guy who invented it would not call himself a mechanical engineer, but we would claim that he was a mechanical engineer. So there are many means of mobility that is what I want to say, uh, skiing right is one way we move on very slippery surface. So that can be used, there are many ways by which you can move. So many of them have been studied now and many robots have been built which use these various means. And I forgot to mention legs which is uh, biologically what is most familiar for us. Right? So the, the problem statement that we have for the design of this robot Nadraj. the problem that this is supposed to solve or what we had to solve was this. Uh, we wanted to build a robot for monitoring and maintenance. So in nuclear power plants basically it has to be able to withstand the radiation which is present in nuclear power plants because uh, this radiation is hazardous for human beings. So there are regions where radiation intensity is so high that a person will not be able to work for more than 30 seconds, 1 minute at the most. One has to just go in and come out right. And, uh, regarding monitoring and maintenance activities that is being conceived it is something fairly simple. If you have cameras on the robot, the robot can take the cameras to places where some problem is currently happening. So that the, the a clear view of what is happening is given to the operators outside the radioactive environment. So that is something this should be able to do and also maintenance would be very very elementary. There could be leaks on the ground, radioactive leaks on the ground which has to be wiped out, which has to be cleaned. There could be some simple turning on or off of valves or switches and things like that. Right? Much of this can nowadays be automated by itself. If you have a robot there in some emergency situations you may be able to do it using a robot. So 
this is a kind this is the a broad statement of the problem hmm. if you look at it in a little more detail the environment in which the robot has to work is something like this there could be a room in which there could be some pipes laid on the ground because uh, human beings can step across that when we design such facilities we don't mind putting pipes on the ground right as soon as we put a pipe on the ground immediately it precludes many types of mobility uh, for robots which has to move within this if it's a wheel vehicle it may not be able to move from this point to this point right there could be some work benches which are there there could be a higher floor to which there could be steps so there could be a mezzanine floor there could be a large number of work benches or obstacles or work centers basically the robot shouldn't collide with any of them Right. So it should work in a typical environment like this. It should be able to move around in this space, avoiding the obstacles. It should be able to step across these pipes on the ground, typically of the order of thirty centimeters diameter. It should be able to climb steps onto another floor. It may not be steps; it may be a ramp. So these are typical. This is a typical environment in which the robot has to work. So. choosing the type of mobility the means by which mobility has to be provided for the platform on which the cameras and hand or whatever has to be there that is a very important issue so so what was chosen was legs mainly uh, the direct mapping is that this has been built for human beings so human beings have legs so machines with legs probably are the best here right but uh, if you look at it in more detail what this legs should be able to do for us are the following so it can st step over sufficiently small obstacles it can climb staircases it is quite possible that this probably is not yeah this is also related to the environment which we saw when we place our foot when we are walking in a region where there are some places where the feet cannot be placed we can see that and we can place our feet accordingly correct so this is something any walking machine should be able to do so selective placement of feet then another thing that happens if you have a wheel vehicle suppose the wheel falls into a small ditch what happens to the body the body immediately tilts it gets a shock right so the motion of the body is not that well isolated from the motion of the wheel on the other hand if we have feet if we have legs then it's possible to move in such a way that whatever be the regularity of the terrain when you are climbing a step i'll very soon demonstrate how this can be done you can keep the body in at the same level with the same orientation it is possible to do that how it can be done in a particular case i'll show 
So, it is possible to isolate the motion of the body, isolate in the sense the shocks and such things need not be passed on to the body from the irregularity of the terrain. So, this is an important consideration, I will call it perfect suspension of body. This is important when you are carrying a very fragile payload and you should not really have any shocks coming onto them. So, it will be able to climb over small obstacles, step over small obstacles, climb staircases. These are fairly regular objects on the ground in the environment which I showed, but in general this can actually negotiate very irregular can move on terrain. So, if it has to go out into the field which is the most irregular terrain that you have seen a walking a biological walking system negotiate. Yeah. So, what moves on rocky surfaces? Crawlers they move on rocky surfaces but anything with the legs which move like the way we do or the way three four legged animals move I mean any four legged animal yeah they can. So, one thing which can negotiate very regular terrain which very steep uh, shear surfaces and things like that of course, with the ledge are mountain goats. Mountain goats can very easily it seems to climb very steep uh, cliffs without much problem, without much apparent fear definitely, but uh, it needs some footholds of course, but they seem to move around move very fast over such irregular terrain. And something very interesting uh, with regard to advantages of legs in this particular environment which is radioactive is the following. If it is if it is a wheel vehicle, if there are some leaks and contamination on the ground which is typically there, the wheels eventually become contaminated right. Whereas, if you have legs, if you have feet you can put a shoes, you can put shoes on the feet. So, even if it gets contaminated when it comes out it can be removed much more easily than replacing a wheel. So, it is easy to put symbol protective cover for the feet. With all these advantages you would wonder why did we at all invent wheel, wheel vehicles. And wheel vehicles have been there for several thousands of years I am sure. So, why did not we initially build walking vehicles? <laughs> yeah, it is much more difficult actually to is we have to take care of stability which is not a simple matter. The complexity is very high in general. So, many considerations are there, but you have to move the legs, moving of the leg is not as simple as moving a wheel. So, in generally the complexity increases. If you look at the weight that usually is higher than for wheel vehicles. There are so many legs are there, you have to actuate each joint and so actuators are there, actuators are typically electric. So, you need to reduce the speed, increase the torque. So, you need gear reducers all these add to weight. So, these are much more difficult to develop than wheeled or tracked vehicles right. Now, let us get into the initial specifications and the initial considerations for design of this particular robot for this environment. So, we started out with very few specifications. We wanted to leave the design as open as possible, 
but nevertheless there are some minimum things which have to be handled. So, we specified that the largest step that it needs to climb would have a height of 0 0.5 meters since it has to step over some uh, things like pipes which are typically of the order of 0 0.2, 5, 0 0.3 meters diameter we we specified that the stroke of the foot that is how much the foot can move horizontally should be of the order of also 0 0.5 meters. So, which essentially would mean that when a when a foot is on the ground that propels the body forward with that set of feet on the ground the body can be propelled forward by 0 0.5 meters before it has to be lifted these are related. We also specified a ramp of 15 degree incline which it should be able to climb. So, these were the only initial specifications. We did not say anything about the payload that it has to carry because what we were going to put there was something like a camera which is very very light and uh, maybe an arm, but we had another idea uh, related to arm instead of having an arm we thought we can put additional links to a leg. So, that it can have a gripper or a hand and that can be used to do the work of a hand fine one or two legs can be extended or enhanced in capability to work as a hand too fine. Monkeys do it all the time they use the legs as manipulate with the legs also we can do it that well. So, these are the initial specifications let us look at some of the initial decisions something very simple as the number of legs. What are the possibilities? Again going by nature what do you have? 2 legs, 4 legs, 6 legs, 8 legs, centipedes which are supposed to have 100 legs this is what we see typically right in nature which do you think is ideal here eh? 2 legs 3 3 so why 3 3 is more stable that is right but if it is 3 legs in order to move the body it has to lift the leg at some point of time right. So, then it gets reduces reduced to 2 and you do not you may not have stability with 2 it is possible to have stability with that, but uh, requires some additional things. 4 yeah if you have 4 you can perhaps keep 3 on the ground all the time lift 1 place it again on the ground and then lift another right. There are gates by dogs horses cats which do that. So, 4 seems to be fine. So, why did nature develop 6 legged and multi legged vehicles? Roaches have 6, insects, most insects have 6, right? Spiders have 8, centipedes have even more. So, suppose uh, a dog damages one of his legs, you have seen such dogs on the campus, very difficult for it to move, right? So, this is a very important issue redundancy or reliability or robustness if some damage happens can the machine survive or do something at least. So, 4 we thought is not enough the next possibility is 5, but 5 is an odd number which you do not see in nature right have you seen odd numbered legs in nature I will come to one 
effectively odd numbered leg, but typically you do not see. So, 6 is the next possibility. So, generally it turns out also that the possibility of having greater stability is more when you have more number of legs. Okay. So, 6 seems good even if a leg gets cut off you may have a 4 legged or 5 legged gait which is still stable. Okay. So, why not more number of legs centipede has many more each leg means something like 3 2 or 3 degrees of freedom 2 or 3 motors or actuators and all the paraphernalia which comes with that right is joint of a manipulator stationary manipulator which you talk, which you learn is something like an additional 1 lakh 1 and a half lakh of rupees a lakh is 100,000 rupees. Right? So, this is a significantly additional cost. So, we would actually increase only after a big uh, it will be a big decision to increase. So, we typically chose 6 lakhs. So, consideration was redundancy and stability. Another consideration will be complexity that is why we do not have more. And in nature as the number of insects are much more than the number of mammals with 4 legs. So, 6 has been a fairly common number of legs for robots, 4 also are there. I mentioned I will tell you about one leg robot. So, a one leg robot has been designed, but it was based on a biological corresponding biological system. Have you seen one legged animals biological system? You have not actually, I also have not, but there is something which moves as if it has only one leg yeah a kangaroo moves both his legs together in unison yes frog hops and then lands on four feet kangaroo stays on two feet so a kangaroo appears like it is a system with just the way it moves hops which is one leg and one of the biggest development in robotics has been the development of dynamically stable one legged hopping machines Okay, they are much more complex to control. So, number of legs uh, 6 seems to be what uh, that is what we chose. We probably could have chosen 4 and had a much lighter robot. Now, having chosen 6 legs, how do you arrange it on the body? What are the possibilities? basically arrangement of legs. So, if you have seen cockroaches it is somewhat like this there is a body with a head and with a legs somewhat like this. The rear legs are larger. three legs on one side and three legs on the other side there is a axis of symmetry for the machine. And you have seen cockroaches scampering around I am sure all of you have seen and they are very mobile very difficult to run and catch one although you are much larger much it is very easy for a cockroach to avoid us. So, this is one arrangement if you look at a spider that also has that is eight legs but the arrangement is somewhat like this slightly elongated body with a head and if you look at the legs they are arranged like this right somewhat like this. So, you have all of you have seen spiders and cockroaches which is greater mobility 
why does why do you say so you can climb walls cockroaches also can is more difficult yeah that is uh, climbing walls is another ability so i am talking about walking on level ground what do you which do you think is more mobile, more mobile spiders can change directions have you seen that yeah so if you approach a spider in this direction you will see that without turning the spider scampers in this direction a little bit and then moves somewhere else can a cockroach do that sideways not very easily so this guy has a preferred direction whereas this guy is omni almost omni direction most of the robots built have been of this type walking machines with six legs have been of this type a typical example this this a roach by the way and this is a spider so a, a very important example is the adaptive suspension vehicle which weighs around 2500 kilograms very huge machine built in ohio state university uh, mid 1980s to 1990s that is a very famous uh, uh, machine which has this particular configuration a very famous machine which is this configuration is audex it has only six legs instead of eight and uh, this has that omnidirectional capability so a machine like that with six legs would be would be something like this if there is one preferred direction of walking there would be six equally good directions of walking right at least six equally good directions of walking if we design it properly any direction is equally good so this was the configuration that we chose six direction six leg axis symmetric the axis being vertical this was the configuration so if you choose a configuration like this once you arrange the legs in a cyclically symmetric manner like this the next question is how should i design the legs remember we what is the purpose of the leg the purpose of the leg is to move the body right so at a time there will be at least three legs on the ground and these three legs or more legs may be on the ground and these legs are going to propel the body or move the body fine so in order to move the body what we do is move the feet with respect to the body that is how we move the body because these feet are planted on the ground they are not going to move with respect to the ground when you move the feet with respect to the body what happens really is this feet being stationary the body moves with respect to the feet okay now in order to be able to give any motion in any direction that you want to the body with three legs on the ground we we would ideally like to have the work spaces of the feet we would like them to be three dimensional regions in space which means that each leg should have each foot or each leg should have 3 degrees of freedom right and the work spaces as i said are three dimensional regions in space so if we assume the body to be fixed each foot will have a work space like this the foot can move within this right it will be three dimensional now what is now what will be the shape and arrangement of these work spaces with respect to the body that is what is going to determine what is the size of the step it can climb what kind of ramps it can climb in which direction can it move how much what could be the stroke of the leg 
all these are determined by these workspaces fine and what do you think would be the shape of the workspace now this being axis symmetric or cyclic symmetric about the axis a typical shape of the workspace could be something like this they are identical so if you divide a cylinder into six equal parts what you what you get are sectors like this right so workspace may typically be like a sector it will be something like this and six of them arranged all around would form it would be we expect it to be something like this right fine but that is just a sort of shape we need to give size to this what should be the inner radius what should be the outer what should be the height these are questions that we have to answer right so this inner radius r inner the outer radius r outer the height h if we decide this then we have decided the arrangements and size of the workspaces arrangement has been decided but the size and dimension of the workspace would be decided and this have to be chosen such that our original specifications are met not only that they are met but the robot is still compact and light that is what we would like to have so remember the the consideration for this the considerations for this our step height stroke these are the two major things that we have specified now in addition to this we need to ensure the following we need to really consider how it will climb a step how it will walk and while it is doing that what kind of stability should it have all this have to be really considered in order to now come out with sizes for this and so how it was done in our case i'll describe in the next class and uh, i will complete discuss the mechanical design aspects and uh, if there is time professor said will describe uh, some aspect of the control hardware so that you get an idea of how the design was for this particular machine fine right. you have questions you should be brimming with questions actually <laughs> because this is not an ordinary type of design um, it is in many of the things that i have describing i probably have in stated fully all the considerations so you should really ask questions yeah for also stability the reason was redundancy suppose one get leg gets damaged right Yeah, that is only one of the gates. Uh, the symbols that we demonstrated could have other gates also. So the question to why not four legs, and why six legs is mainly redundancy. If a leg gets damaged, then you have at least five legs, and you may be able to drag yourself out of the uh, 
radioactive room. Yeah, it does. So we have to bear that cost. But uh, if it gets damaged, then imagine people have to go in and bring it out. Which could uh, damage people. So we don't uh, ideally want such a situation. But even with six legs, there are situations in which that can happen. Okay, so we'll meet again tomorrow.